The mole concept is the cornerstone of quantitative chemistry and understanding it is crucial for success in CSEC, CAPE, GCE exams and in pursuing a career in fields related to medicine, pharmacy, forensic chemistry or medical research. In the pharmaceutical industry for example, the mole concept is used in the formulation of medicines. The active ingredients in medicines are often measured in moles to ensure the correct dosage is given. By mastering this concept, you can perform calculations, analyze chemical reactions, and make informed decisions about the quantities of substances involved. The mole concept is therefore a powerful tool that enables us to bridge the gap between the macroscopic world we observe and the microscopic world of atoms and molecules. This is an introduction to the mole concept in an adaptation of an online lesson. Please go through at your own pace. This is Chem with Chem. We help you to grasp chemistry for your exams and for life through sound teaching in theory, practical, and past paper review tutorial sessions. Ask about and register for our small group tutorial sessions by sending an email to chemwithchem at gmail.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. You'll, re you'll realize soon, in short order, that there is a connection between moles and mass. All right, anybody else? What, what comes to mind when you hear the word mole? Does anybody think about the spot on your chin that you have to shave around? Or, the, you know, the spot that you have and you call it a beauty spot? Anybody thinks about that? Does that come to anybody's mind? You think about molecules. All right, we can have, when we're talking about moles, we talk about molecules as well. You can have a mole of anything. All right, one more before we move on to look at what it is really. One more, one more, one more person. Go ahead. So go ahead, type it in the comments. What comes to mind when you hear the word mole? So we can measure mass, we can measure volume, or we can count pieces. We measure mass in grams. We measure volume in liters. If you're in America, they'll say liters. Or, you know, we, we do it somewhat out here in Jamaica because if you go to buy gas, they'll say $220 per liters. But in chemistry, we use, well, liters and DM cube, they're the same thing. So for the scope of our syllabus, we will say DM cube. And whenever we're talking about cubic units on a whole, it means we're talking about volume, length times width times height, how much space something occupies. But the SI unit, the SI unit of amount of substance in science, we use the moles to um, represent that. So we count pieces in moles. All right. So whereas, you know, in real life, when we're buying things, if we're buying um, oranges, we buy it by the dozen. You know, in um in chemistry, when we're counting things, we count it in terms of mole. So what you can pretty much think about um the mole as you can think about it, you can think of it like a big dozen. It's like a big dozen. The only thing, or maybe I should ask you, how many pieces does one dozen represent? In everyday life, when you have a dozen things. How many things, how many entities 12, are we talking about? 12. 12, 12, and in the chat says 12. All right, very good. So that is it. When we have a dozen things, we have 12 things. Now, what we need to understand now, how many things we have when we have um, one mole. So when you have one dozen, you have 12 entities. When you have one mole, let us look at how many things we have when we have one mole. When we have one mole, it is huge. So this is the definition. It's defined as the number of carbon atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon 12. But it's not only um, the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. There are other atoms. There are other elements that exist besides carbon 12. They use carbon 12 as a standard when they were um, coming up with this concept. So how many, how big is this big dozen that we're talking about? Big dozen is just the example we're using to bring it across. 
So let us look at how big it is. When we're talking about one mole, this is the number of particles we're talking about. One mole of any substance contains this number of particles. One mole of any substance contains this number of particles. This is a huge number. This is six with 23 zeros at the end. Much too big a number to comprehend. It's a huge number. I think they call it 602 hexillion, something, something like that. If you have this amount in one cent, you're good. You can pay off Jamaica's debt, the USA's debt. Your, you and your generation will not have to work for the rest of your life. That number is huge. All right? So one mole contains this number of particles. And this is a big number. This number has a special name. It's called the Avogadro's number. So you're going to treat it like a big dozen. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is called the Avogadro's number. So this is where you're going to pause and you're going to write down what the mole is. The mole is any amount of a substance. Let's see if we can put that in text here. So you put your take that down. So the mole, let's put that in blue so everybody can see it. All right. So the mole, the mole is the amount of a substance that contains, you could say the Avogadro's number of particles that contains, but since we know the Avogadro's number of particles, we can punch it in 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd. That is what the mole is. So it is, it's just a, an amount of a substance. We use it to rep represent amount of substance. And it's the amount of a substance that contains the Avogadro's number of particles. So when you have one mole of a substance, that's the number of entities, individual entities that's contained in it. As we said earlier, treat it like a big dozen. Have you taken that down? Key terms, take that down. One mark for having that. One mole of a substance contains, is the amount of a substance that contains the Avogadro's number of particles. So let's put in of particles. All right, any questions before we uh, move on? All right, cool. So I'm gonna clear this and we're gonna um, look at these particles. What can these particles um, be? So the particles we're referring to here, the representative particles, it could be, it's chemistry. So the particles can be a molecule, someone said when they heard mole, they think of a molecule. So the particles can be a molecule. The particles can also be, it can be a formula unit. If we're talking about an ionic compound like sodium um, chloride, it can be a formula unit. If we're talking about um, an element, it can be an atom. And I think there, there are more things that it can be. It can also be ions. All right, so it can be ions, it can be molecules, it can be formula units. But once we have one mole, we're referring to the Avogadro's number of particles. This is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the, to the 23rd. All right, so let us um, put that up again. An amount of substance that contains the Avogadro's number of Atoms, ions, molecules, or any other chemical unit is called a mole. All right, so we're going to look at we're going to look at um, some um, examples here to kind of make it come to life. So in in theory and in concept, this is what one mole is. But suppose you you wanted someone to take this and you know represent this to you, you know, give you one mole of a substance. Or before we look at how they would represent it to you, let us look at some other examples. Since we said that the particles can be atoms, ions, molecules, or any other chemical unit, let us look at, you know, some examples. So let us look at some examples that we know about. All right, let's look at, so it's the amount of matter or substance that contains the Avogadro's number of particles. So they were looking at the, the def definition here. 
by comparison. It contains the same number of particles as there are in um, 12 grams of isotopically pure carbon-12. So carbon-12 is the standard that they use um, to, um, to, to come up with this definition. Or, but not going to get into that. As long as you state that um, one mole of a substance contains Avogadro's number of particles, we're good to know. We're good to go. So one mole of carbon-12. This is the number of um, atoms that would be present, the Avogadro's number of atoms. If we're talking about water molecules, one mole would contain the Avogadro's number of molecules. If we're talking about the nitrate ions, as we see here, one mole would contain the Avogadro's number of particles. Now, someone also pointed out earlier that when she hears the word mole, she thinks of she thinks of mass all right and that's a very very important term so we're going to go right to that no if if you were asked to you know count out avogadro's number of carbon atoms that would be impossible because for one atoms are very 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 and we could say very from noted by kingdom come very small. So to make things tangible and to put it in a form that you can understand and that people can understand in general, this is where the mass would come in. So one mole of a substance contains the Avogadro's number of particles. That's on the microscopic level. On the macroscopic level now, you can represent one mole of a substance in terms of mass or in terms of grams. All we would need to do is, if we're talking about an element, we would go in the periodic table. We would look at the element in question. So someone um, look for carbon and find um, the mass of carbon. Find the mass number for carbon from the periodic table. You don't have to look at the periodic table. You should be able to um, see it. When we're when we talking about carbon, what's its mass? What's the mass of carbon? Go ahead and type your answer in the comments under this video. Twelve. All right. So if you want to weigh out, if you want to give me one mole of carbon, you would need to look in the periodic table, find the mass number, find the mass of carbon. It's there already. If we're talking about an element, look in the periodic table. Get the mass number of carbon, and you'll see it as 12. So what you would need to do now, you would need to weigh out 12 grams of carbon. And within that 12 grams, you would have one mole of carbon, a.k.a. the Avogadro's number of particles. The Avogadro's number of carbon atoms would be present there. All right, so in a sense, then we are saying, we are saying that one mole of a substance, we're saying one mole of a substance has what we call a molar mass. So one mole of a substance contains the Avogadro's number, but it has an associated mass associate. It has an associated mass with it. Okay, so if it's an element, We'll go in the periodic table, look at the mass number for that element, and we would weigh that out and express it in grams. And you would say, here, sir, this is your one mole of carbon, 12 grams. What if I ask you to weigh out one mole of magnesium? What are you looking for in the periodic table? The mass number of magnesium. Which is? Mass number of magnesium you'd be looking for? Magnesium. Sir, 24. 24. We call magnesium um, a magic, one of the magic, uh, magic number um, elements because it has 12 protons, 12 neutrons, 12 electrons. Protons and neutrons give you the mass. So 24. So if you wanted to express one mole of magnesium, you would look in the periodic table for its mass, mass number, and you express that in grams. 
So if you weigh 24 grams of magnesium, then that 24 grams is the equivalent of one mole. And within that 24 grams, you would have the Avogadro's number of particles. So the atomic mass of any substance expressed in grams corresponds to one mole of the substance. Atomic mass of a substance expressed in grams is known as the molar mass. Molar mass. And it, 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 it has a little buzz to it. It's a little self-explanatory. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. If it's an element, find the mass in the periodic table and weigh that out in grams. If we're talking about a diatomic substance like oxygen, we would find the mass in the periodic table, multiply that by two and express that in grams because anything that ends in in, I-N-E, or gen, G-E-N, those are diatomic um, elements. So when you're expressing one mole, for example, one mole of the molecule hydrogen, it would be one times two, two grams. One mole of the, the molecule gas, nitrogen, it would be 14 times two, and you'd weigh out 28 grams. That's a little difficult because gases, it's hard to, it's hard to, it, it's hard to weigh out gases, you know, but you get the point. It's a concept. You get the point. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so that's 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 basically all there is to it for this part. All right, so one mole of an element, one mole of an element has what we call a molar mass. One mole of an element has what we call a molar mass. So just like in real life, when they send you to buy um one dozen oranges, let's say oranges are short. Your mother could have said, or Forget the shortage. Your, your parents could have said, go and buy half a dozen oranges. How many oranges um, would, you, would you bring back to her? Six. Eight. You'd bring six. Half of a dozen is six. So in like manner, if we say half a mole of carbon, we're looking at half of the molar mass. That's if we're going to wait out, we're looking at half of the molar mass. If, we, if, we, if we're looking at number of particles, we're looking at half of the Avogadro's number. So there's a relationship I want to, there's a really, well, there, there, there's a relationship I want to, um, to show you. All right, so let me um, pause for a bit. So one of the applications or one of the things that we do a lot with with, you know, in moles is that we, we convert between number of particles, we convert from mass to moles. But we have to bear in mind um, the relationship, the relationship between um, mass and moles, the relationship between number of particles and moles. So I'm not able to annotate the way I would want to. But um, they're asking us here to calculate the number of sodium atoms that's in 0 0.12 moles of sodium. So I'm just going to write it in a, in a simpler form. All right. So there's a relationship. I should ask you, what's the relationship between number of particles and moles? How many particles is, um, are represented by one mole. When we have one mole of a substance, how many particles are being represented? One mole. How many particles must one mole of a substance contain? One mole of a substance contains one mole of a substance. There's a particular um, name for the number. Let me go back to a previous slide. One mole of a substance contains let me go back here. All right, see it in the chat. Avogadro's number, very good. But what is this Avogadro's number? What is it? What is it exactly? Avogadro's number, it's right here. The Avogadro's number is, oh, there we go. The Avogadro's number is this number we have here, six, 6.02. 
times 10 to the 23rd. That's the Avogadro's number. All right, so if we have one, very good. If we have one mole of a substance, that one mole of a substance contains the Avogadro's number. If we have half a mole of a substance, that amount would contain half of the Avogadro's num um, number. Just like if we have a dozen, that's equivalent to 12 units. If we have two dozen, that's 24 units. Three dozen, 36 units. It's the same thing. One mole of a substance would contain the Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Two moles would contain two times the Avogadro's number. If we have anything that's less than the Avogadro's number, we're going to have a, a fraction of the Avogadro's number. If it's half, we can divide through easily by this. 6.02 divided by 2, that would be 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. And we have to just practice, you know, knowing how to punch this in the calculator and all of that. So it means, therefore, once you have the number of moles being represented, we can always determine how many particles are present. And there's a, there's a relationship that we can use to do that. There's a relationship between number of moles and number of particles. All right? You can represent it as a magic triangle if you wish. Some people like to use the um, idea of a magic triangle. I think I'm going to actually... Um, Pull that up so you can actually see the relationship. Some persons prefer to use a statement. So um, I want to, um, let me get a blank slide so we can do some write, writing. Can we write? Yes, we can. All right. So there's a relationship between the moles and the Avogadro's number. One mole of a substance contains the Avogadro's number of particles. So we can write this um, relationship, ignore this, um, what's that? That's an A down there that needs to be removed. Ignore this little A. All right, good. All right, so there's a relationship between number of moles and number of particles. So earlier we said that one mole of a substance contains Avogadro's number of particles, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, if we have a number, if we have more than one moles, then we're, mole we're going to have more than Avogadro's number. If we have less than a mole, we're going to have less than Avogadro's number. All right? We, 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 we established that earlier. So we can use this relationship. Some people call it a magic triangle relationship. You'll see that is the same as writing our statements. So in this case, oh, uh, okay. So I'm going to pause and fix that because that should have been NA. I think the A got, um, you know, got. Okay, so that A, that A just now was the Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant, Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So we can represent, we can use this relationship to represent, um, you know, the relationship or to show the relationship between number of moles and the number of particles given. So whichever, if we want to find number of moles, which is little n, number of moles is equal to whatever number of particles you're given divided by the Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number here is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. It's just like when you're looking at dozen. N, you could say N, little n represents a dozen, and you're given a what particular number. If you're given six oranges, you would put the six where you're at the top, and you would divide it by the amount that makes a dozen. So you would say six over 12 is equal to half. So here now, it's a similar relationship. Whatever number of particles you're given, to find the number of moles of it that's present, you divide that number of particles by the Avogadro's constant. All right, then normally say whichever one you want to find, you cover it. So if you want to find, if you want to find, um, if you want to find number of moles, you cover little n and is equal to number of particles given over Avogadro's number. If you are, if you want to find um, the number of particles given, then that would be the number of moles times the Avogadro's number. All right, so this can also be represented in a different way. You can use, you can, you can write a statement 
and use it to solve, depending on what you're asked. So let us um, see how we could do that. We could write a statement. No matter what we're given, we can always write a statement. Um, let's say we want to find, you know, how many particles is being represented by a certain number of moles. We write a set, we write a standard statement. And we can, we can use the, the, the question that we popped up earlier. Calculate the number of sodium atoms in 0 0.1. Um, calculate the number of sodium atoms in 0 0.1 moles of um, sodium. Let's put it right here. Calculate, calculate the number of sodium atoms in 0 0.120 moles of Na. All right, so we can do this. We can write a statement of fact that we already know. So we know that one mole of anything, one mole of Na, one mole of sodium contains, we can put an equal, the Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd. So my question to you, if we have, if one mole of sodium contains the Avogadro's number of Na atoms, right? If we have 0 0.12 moles, would that contain more or less of the Avogadro, um, more or less? than the Avogadro's number. One mole has the Avogadro's number. If we have point 0.1 mole, is that less or more than one mole? Hello? Point 0.1, two moles, is that less or more than one mole? It's less, point 0.12 is less than one. So would you expect to have more or less of the, um, the, the uh, more, would you expect to have more or less than Avogadro's number here for this point one, two? More or less? Oh, persons in the chat. Somebody says, um, somebody says um, less. Yes. So point one, two is less than a mole. So if one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, then we can now write, say, okay, if one mole is equal to that, 0 0.120 moles of the same Na would be equal to, and we put, we can put X. We can put question mark, unknown. And from there we can, we can um, solve. Cross multiply and we cross multiply and we solve. From there we cross multiply. Right? So from there we can cross multiply and get, and get our, get our, our answer. All right, so when we do that, we'll end up with, let's see what we end up with. So question mark, the number of moles that we'll end up with would be, number of moles would be, look at us uh, multiplying, go across diagonals would be one times X or question mark is equal to 0 0.120 times, Two zero times the Avogadro's number. I like to keep the Avogadro's number together when I'm punching it in the um, calculator. That's 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd. Could someone punch that in and tell us what um what um how many number of sodium atoms would 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 this correspond to? Somebody punch that in, please. Could someone punch that in? So you're going to say 0 0.012, 0 0.012, 0 0.120, my bad, 0 0.120 times the Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd. What did you get? The number you get is still going to be big, but it's less than the Avogadro's number. Is someone working this? Share your answer, please. All right, I'm seeing it in the chat. Someone said 7.224 times 10 raised to the, all right. So let's put that in. That's equal to 7.224 times 10 
raised to the 22nd. And as much as that's a big number, that is less than the Avogadro's number. So in essence, if, we're, if we are converting from moles to number of particles, we're going to be multiplying. If we're um, converting from number of particles to moles, we're going to be dividing. All right? It's just like working with the dozen. You have half of a dozen. You want to know how much that is? You say a half of a dozen times the value of one dozen. Half times 12, which gives us six. If we have six entities and we want to convert that to dozen, we say six divided by the value of a one dozen. 12, six divided by 12, which gives you one over two, one half, 0 0.5. So it's something similar. One mole of a substance contains the Avogadro's number. So we can play around and see how many moles will be represented by a set number of substances. Or we can play around and see, you know, how many entities are represented, represented by a set number of um, moles. All right, so this is where we'll um, stop for today. Please tell us how you found this video in the comments and please also check out other videos where applications of the mole concept in calculations are done. They are done in several, several of the CXC past papers that are worked. You may register for a small group tutorial session by emailing chemwithchem at gmail.com.